Hi guys, I'm Woodcraft Hamster and welcome back to my beginner's guide to wood carving series. Now we've talked about a lot of theory so far and I thought we'd actually do something a bit more practical today. And what I want to show you are these. Now these are tri-sticks, um, you may have heard of them before, and essentially it's just any old offcut of wood or stick or small branch that you can get hold of. And what you're doing is practicing certain cuts, um, really to try and improve your precision. That's, that's the whole purpose of these. Um, now they're particularly good for bushcrafters because they're great for showing you how to carve tent pegs, pot hangers, um, how to sort of put a notch into things or to put a notch all the way around so you can easily snap something if you don't have a saw, etc, etc. But it's also really good for sort of, like I say, learning your precision cuts and precision carving. Um, now I've got another stick here. I was doing a bit of pruning in the garden. I thought these would be useful. And it sort of just goes to demonstrate that although this is by no means perfect, there's a lot of little, little nobbles on there. I've had to cut off a lot of branches and thorns. Um, you know, any old piece of wood will do. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to move the camera just a little bit closer in and I'll show you what it is the sort of thing that I will do for these. Right then, guys, well, I've got a small selection of knives here, something similar to what I imagine most of you will be using. The Mora Companion, uh, the Mora Basic uh, 120 off the top of my head, uh, and the Mora Eldritch, just because they were the first ones that I grabbed. Now, the first thing I want to do is put a point on the end of this. This is really useful for making things like tent pegs, um, or if you're kind of constructing something in your camp and you want to sort of hammer something in with a bit of a point. Um, now, some people make these points really thin and exaggerated. I'm not a big fan of that. Um, I think they just snapped far too easily. So you kind of want something that's kind of a little bit sharp, um, but you know, not too much. Um, and for this, I'm gonna be using my chest lever grip. So you're gonna have your knife in your normal sort of position, turn it through 90 degrees, and then use your wrist and your other hand. It's a particularly hard bit of wood. This, there we go. And what I like to do is just work my way round, like so, until you've got a bit of a point like this, and then from probably about halfway down where I started carving, work my way round again. And that will give you generally quite a good point like so. It's not really, really long. It's not really, really fine. Um, and that will go into most types of ground, even hard ground, um, quite easily. Now, the second thing I want to do, and I use the same knife, um, up on the top here, if this was going to be a temp peg, it'd probably be a little bit shorter, mind you. Um, but what you can do is something called chamfering the end. Um, now, basically, from probably, I don't know, five mil or quarter inch, depending on what system you use, just make a small cut and work your way round. What this does, um, and especially for temp pegs and things you're going to be driving in, is it actually stops it from splitting, or at least reduces the amount of splitting. Now you can do more or less of this, you, know, you can make it tidier than this, a lot tidier than this to be honest, but by just putting that little chamfer on the top, if you hit this with the back of an axe or a, or a large stick or something like that, it will help prevent this from splitting and allow you to drive it in. Now I'm just going to move the camera around for a better angle and I'll show you a few other little things. Now the next thing I want to show you is just a really simple V-notch. Um, this can be useful if you're trying to tie two sticks together or maybe you're making a frame for a table or a chair or something like that. And all you do is take your knife, put in a little bit of pressure, you can work it backwards and forwards a couple of times and then come back and work the other way. Now very, very quickly there, I just work this out. Now that is the simplified version. Obviously you can make this deeper by coming back from both the sides. And you can work down deeper in there as well. Um, but essentially that's what you're trying to do. I'll give you a bit of a close up there. Um, now next up, I think I will show you uh, a simple pot hook. These are always quite useful if you're a bush crafter. And essentially what you'll do is you'll make a slightly angled cut. Hopefully you can see that all right. Um, there we go, show you from that angle as well. So you, you've got your knife at a slight angle. And again, you push it down, you work it backwards and forwards a few times. 
and then what you're going to do after that is come in from above it at an even steeper angle. Now this is quite a hard wood but you'll see where I'm going with this in a second and again you can always go back over that same little line so so far I'll give you a close-up we've got this and the reason for doing this at a bit of an angle cut back a little bit deeper on that as well and then come in again and hopefully what you'll see here is that you've now got a little undercut just here and that works really really well as a pot hanger um, in fact this way around is actually better um, but obviously you know if this was a shorter stick you could hang your bail arm on there now I'm using a really thin stick here and you can go even deeper if you want to you know, I tend not to go more than about halfway through the stick I'm using, uh, but I think if you know, if I was making a pot hanger, I'd probably use something a little bit thicker than this, not by much, um, maybe sort of half over again. But essentially, you can see where that goes. Um, and if you want to use two sticks, you can make two versions of this, and you can link them together. So this one would be this way round, the other stick would be that way, and they would just hook into each other. Um, now another variation of the pot hanger, and this is something I do quite regularly while I'm out and about. Let me find a suitable bit of stick. Uh, that'll do us. So let's have a let's use the Mora clipper for this. So what you want to do essentially, same as we did before almost, but you're coming in across a diagonal across the stick, like so and then you're going to come back across the other way. So you're basically just cutting a across into this stick. Now you want to try and get it as deep as you can on the first pass. It's not a huge problem if you need to deepen it later, I just find it easier this way. Um, and then what you will do is just take out the bottom of that cross, just carve that out, and let me move some of this out of the way, and then you want to carve out the two sides, but it's very important that you leave the top sort of v-shape in and I'll show you why in just a second so again if it doesn't quite line up that's fine just go back over your lines deepen them out a little bit you can smooth that down a bit as well and this is the thing guys this is what will sort of teach you that not every cut you make will give you the result that you want straight away you know sometimes you have to work back over lines and that's the same in spoon carving and pretty much any kind of carving really as well as it is with things like tri sticks and I think this is why I think they're such a good sort of tool to teach you good carving and precision. Now it's a little bit messy but hopefully you can see that it's a very similar thing to what we've just made except it's got a bit of a V shape there um, and if I turn it around the other way you can see you've kind of got that little undercut there as well. Now again, as I said, you can make this as pronounced as you like. Obviously, you know, a thicker stick, you can make it a lot deeper. I just grab my little precision mora here. Let's see if I can deepen this down a little bit. And that's the benefit of this is you can deepen this really, really easily with this method. Now the last thing I want to show you is putting a ring all the way around this um, using a small V notch um, and the main purpose for this for me um, is if you're out and about you don't have a saw and obviously sticks like this are relatively um, easy to snap anyway but larger ones certainly aren't um, and what you will normally do you find a suitable section this will probably do us so you can come in at a, maybe a 45 ish degree angle and just push down swap over and do the same thing from the other side and what you've done is you've cut out, where are we, just here, you've cut out a little notch. Now what you want to do is do that all the way round and again you can tidy it up as you go And whether you choose to do it the way I do, which is kind of working one side and then the other to keep it sort of nice and tidy, or if you want to work all the way around on one side first and then come back to it, is entirely up to you. But essentially, I'll just 
just tidy this up while I'm talking to you. What you're trying to do is create a continuous ring all the way around this stick. Now essentially what you'll see here is that this is sort of probably half the diameter of this stick maybe, something along those lines. And what that means, if I take the one, this was just the one I showed you earlier, so this is a section that hasn't been carved in any way and I can probably just about snap it if I really really force it but it's not going to snap easily. Here is a similar bit that I've just done here. So this is ringed all the way around and with very little pressure, it snapped in half. Right then guys, well I hope that was useful. I know it won't have been the most interesting thing for some of you, but I do think these tri-sticks are really, really useful, um, both for bushcrafters, so you can learn how to sort of make things like tent pegs, chamfering off the ends, pot hangers, um, even just kind of thinning down so that you can snap a branch if you don't have a saw. Um, and even things like the V-notch are really useful if you're sort of lashing things and you want somewhere for your cordage to bite into so it doesn't run up and down your stick. Um, and also, you know, for the new wood carvers as well, because it, it does give you a little bit of something to practice with, something simple and easy you can do in your own home, in your back garden, while you're out having a wander in the woodlands. You're doing a bit of carving, and I don't care what anybody says, any kind of carving that you're doing is really, really useful, not only to teach you how to do certain things, but for the practice as well. I mean, these, I mean, as I said earlier, these um, I don't do very often now because I'm doing a lot of carving anyway. Um, but you know, these are pretty untidy. And you know, if I'd, if I'd sat down for maybe a half hour, I could have made these a lot nicer. Um, you know, there would have been very few sort of ragged bits on there and stuff like that. And I could have made, made it a really nice tri stick. Um, I mean, I've seen people who make these um, you know, who kind of almost sort of display worthy, um, you know, they are that good. Um, so again, just something to think about guys, hope it was useful, comments and questions in the box below, hit like and subscribe if you'd like to see more, and I hope you'll all join me next time. Cheers guys.